it's gonna be really crowded, so I'm actually gonna park my bike at the station. I'm at Mashiko, and it's the Mashiko Pottery Festival. It started yesterday. Uh, I went for a 114 kilometer bicycle ride yesterday that's going to become a video. And I assume the parking's gonna be bad in the city itself, so I'm gonna park at the station and walk the rest of the way. This is the first time they've had the Pottery Festival in two years, three years, because of COVID. That was easy, just a quick temperature check, get a wristband. He seemed more worried about the cuts on my hand. Uh, that's from my bicycle crash, actually. So with the crowds and traffic, I am glad I ditched the bike because I don't really like riding in crowds or traffic. It makes me a little nervous. All right, let's say hi to the gods real quick. Ooh, Wisteria. So, um, here you'd be the god for um, victory and success in competition. So, uh, he's a good guy to talk to. I ended up getting a Goshuen that is special for the Pottery Festival here in Mashiko. Nice. Actually, I'm going to need a Goshuen book because I have more Goshuens that haven't been pasted in and I have spots left. One thing that's kind of fun just walking along here is I see shops and stores open that I've never seen open before or very, very rarely are open. It just gets more crowded the closer you get to the center. Oh, here's a traditional sweet shop. Huge line. Which is good because I've never actually seen this many people in Mashiko before. Um, and, you know, the local economy is... Uh, was suffering a little under COVID, so this is good. Lots of places serving food too. So I'll have lots of options at lunchtime. So that's the main ceramic street over there. Uh, it's crowded and the reality is I'm not gonna get to see everything, but I'm gonna see what I can. Oh, there's Hedega's dye house. I did a video on that place. So just a quick look inside the dye house. Before industrialization, indigo was actually one of the most important dyes in Japan. One of the things about it is it is flame retardant, so it was used by firefighters. And so this would be a traditional style dye house where they would have vats of the indigo for dyeing the fabric. And there you would get in to go and you can create patterns on it. It's almost too crowded to film for most of this place. Um, but of course it's not just ceramics and food. Mashka is known for artistry in general. We have clothing, glassware, uh, I already showed the dye house. All those industries you find here in Mashiko. Sort of the focus is on, I guess, artistic expression. Wood carving, that too. I tried doing that once on a school trip. Came out horribly. Didn't do a very good job. Sometimes when I'm working late, this is the pot of tea I want. So what's kind of neat and special about these ones is since they're fired in a wood kiln, they actually get uh, ash on them. These are some very ashed examples, which uh, becomes a glaze. I think I talked about that in one of my earlier videos about here in Mexico. I'd love a Corona or a Land Shark right now. But this hits the spot. A little hot. 
So there's the uh, giant tanuki holding a cup. Big boy. It's like a treasure hunt. You just keep finding more little side streets with uh, little shops set up. It's uh, pretty amazing. I've never seen Mash go this busy. So I've actually made a video about over there. Uh, obviously it was less crowded. Um, this is about the climbing kilns there, the Ishuaiata, which are the oldest kilns in Mashiko. Now I'm going the other way. At the end I found a really cool little stall that was uh, selling, you know, preserves and jams uh, in pottery. So I ended up getting a uh, ume, so plum uh, preserve basically. Almost more like jelly. It's hard to explain. Maybe I'll show a clip of it um, in a jar. It was really cute. And now I'm going the other way. There's lots of places I'd love to stop and get food, but it's like near lunchtime, so the lines are huge, and I'm not a patient person. It just keeps going. I'm now on the grounds of the Mashiko Ceramics Art Museum. Uh, fortunately, I ran into a coworker who told me. Well, she asked me, oh, have you been up to the museum section yet? I'm like, there's more up there? She's like, yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's huge. There's so much here. It's ridiculous and amazing. All right, I'm now going back down the road on the other side. Uh, this place is actually really neat because the kiln is right here. And usually they don't let you get this close to the kiln. But it looks like... They're making an exception for the holiday. Oh, the goat's been moved. The goat's usually up front. They're letting you get much closer than normal. That's kind of cool. So here's our traditional climbing kiln. It climbs up the hill. So it's gonna have multiple chambers to fire. So they start the fire in the first chamber, which preheats everything. Then they put in pottery, and then they can have fires on the side and then they put them to heat up the next one and the next one going up with each one as they get hot enough so you can fire a lot of pottery at one time however it is labor and wood intensive and takes a long time you need teams of people to work a kiln like this right from here we can see the other kiln which is sometimes called a whole kiln um, which is just one chamber uh, just straight through same thing needs multiple days to heat up um, I use one chamber for firing the pottery oh that was fun so it's time to walk back to my bike and then head home and uh, might as well grab a snack I'm back home so let's take a look at what I got first up we have this bowl uh, we were talking about a bowl for Lillian I sent some pictures to my wife and she likes this one the best as you can see there's the back of the rabbit there's the front of the rabbit. Inside is a carrot. So this will be Lillian's bowl, her first bowl. Hopefully she likes her fruits and vegetables and is a better eater than her mother. Sure. Or at least a less picky eater than her mother. Oh. Here is the uh, may preserve and it actually comes in a very traditional container. Um, I like it. Worst case scenario, if we don't like it, well, we have a bottle for storing stuff. Also got blueberry spice jam. I'm actually really interested in what this will taste like because uh, I just find that an interesting combo. So it's going to be blueberry with um, peppers and some other stuff they said. Um, looks pretty good. It was being sold... I group people up. Oh, well, it'll last a long time too. And then the big purchase was a teapot with cups. It was a set. So this was actually made at the pottery studio that I went to with my students last summer. So the two women that were at it, um, they would be, you know, students, they're not masters. They were students at the studio. And then when I saw them the second time, I was like, oh, they look familiar. They look familiar. One of them was a British woman and one of them was Japanese. And I kind of suddenly realized, like, oh, 
I saw them last time. The British woman was actually one of the people that was helping out with our students using the pottery wheel. So it's a pretty nice pot. I actually really like the glazing on it. Traditional. What's cool is it has the strainer built right in so that it's not open. Unlike teapot we have now, which has much larger holes, dirty, um, and so have to use this strainer. So maybe we don't have to use the strainer anymore. If not, well, it's not that big a deal. I just need a slightly larger strainer for this one. And the cups go with it, and they have this really nice blue to him. I really like the color. That's what attracted me to it. And it's also kind of fun that it's like, oh, I bought a, you know, pottery from student, uh, which I guess is really supportive. They seemed really happy. Uh, they didn't sell a ton of stuff. They were not in the most action packed area. Um, but he made some pretty nice stuff. And I think they were really happy that I bought some. And I'm really happy too. So why don't you go down into the comment section, tell me uh, maybe some of your favorite pieces that you saw during this video, what you would have gone for. Uh, leave a comment, give a like, share, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I will see you in the next one.